The amount of experiences that the Nintendo Switch currently offers is almost unfathomable. With a library that already exceeds over 1,500 titles and it's less than three years on the market. We are now in the middle of the dog days of summer and that got us thinking about what games are best suited to the season. And with so many titles already available on the console, we were bound to find some great games that just had a certain je ne sais quoi about them that captures the essence of summer. For me, playing video games has always went hand in hand with other seasonal activities such as camping, or vacationing, and with this list we hope to share with you 5 Nintendo Switch titles that convey those same feelings. The first 4 games are in no particular order leading to our number 1 spot, and we ask that you keep in mind that we haven't played everything the system has to offer. If we did miss anything that you think would better fit this list, we ask that you please offer your opinion in the comment section below, as we would love to hear it. While you're at it, like this video and subscribe as it would go a long way to grow the channel. Don't forget your sunscreen, grab the nice beverage, and relax as we go over our top 5 Nintendo Switch games for the summer. If it were possible for a popsicle to have a video game counterpart, it would have to be Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This game hits you with all the tropical environments you would expect to see in any Donkey Kong Country game, and they've never looked better. And if the heat's a little too much, Tropical Freeze uniquely pairs its dense jungles with a tundra climate to cool your eyeballs from all those steamy locales that the game introduces you to. You'll find yourself visiting the ecosystems of an African savanna, to an arctic take on DK Island, and with new animal enemies to match those locations, it almost feels like you're taking a summer trip to the zoo with your loved ones. As a matter of fact, do just that. One of my fondest childhood memories was playing Donkey Kong Land on my Game Boy on the way to the zoo with my family. And with the handheld nature of the Switch, you can now take arguably the best Donkey Kong Country game the series has to offer with you wherever you want. If I haven't sold you on Tropical Freeze's summeriness yet, then know that there are platforms in this game that are literally melting popsicles dripping off their sticks. If for whatever reason you missed the game on the Wii U and you haven't picked it up yet on the Switch, do yourself a favor and give it a try. It's a fantastic game to play any time of the year. Camp Santos's Firewatch left an impression on me, and to tell you the truth, I put this list together just so I had an excuse to talk about this game some more. Set in the Wyoming wilderness in the summer of 1989, you play as a new fire outlook, Henry, who for reasons I won't spoil, is looking to escape from events that have tragically plagued his life. So he takes this job to isolate himself from the outside world and hopefully get some clarity on the situation that he's in. He's not completely alone, however, as you'll develop a very real feeling relationship with your boss Delilah over the course of the summer through your walkie-talkies. Camp Santos has done a masterful job developing these characters, and if your experience is anything like mine, you'll find yourself as attached to Henry and Delilah as you would the cast of your favorite long-running book series. Aside from the cast of this game feeling very grounded in reality, the plot in this game is mysterious enough to frequently be messing with your perception on the events surrounding Henry. This game does carry the stigma of being in the walking simulator genre, but I don't think that a traditional game could pull off the same experience that you'd get when playing Firewatch. And as far as walking sims go, Firewatch is at the top of its class. There's still plenty to do here gameplay-wise as you navigate through the woods with some easter eggs sprinkled throughout your linear adventure, and you solve some light puzzles here and there. The setting here is breathtaking, and it does a great job emulating one of America's many state parks with its lush forest and its clear starry vistas. The strongest element here is definitely the story and with the player having some control over the narrative. As you choose how you wish to interact with Delilah, you'll find lots of replay value in trying to see what type of relationship you can build with her on your next run. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Ouch! Uh, I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. 
I could go on about this game more, but without the risk of it turning into a full review, I must go on. Trust me, instead of packing a book with you on your next camping trip, just bring this game with you instead. I promise you won't regret it. Okay, on this one, I'm gonna cheat with Go Vacation. I haven't actually played this game. I know, how can I recommend a game that I haven't played? Well, I'm not. This game is, however, highly recommended by its very passionate fan base that comes over from the Wii era, and they've made enough noise about it where this game has hit my radar, and I thought it would be criminal not to include it on my list. A game I have played, which is also from the Wii era, is Wii Sports Resort, and this game does appear to have drawn inspiration from that title, and expands upon that idea with four resorts full of vacation activity themed minigames to partake in. When I'm vacationing, I often watch people do these things poolside. Maybe on my next trip, I'll join them with my Go Vacation Avatar Doppelganger when I finally pick this one up. Super Mario Odyssey is not a traveling simulator. It's a platformer, but man does it nail the many aspects of what it feels like to vacation in a new area. The clothing, the people, or fork people, the landmarks, the atmosphere that has been crafted for each of these worlds is distinct from one another, and they are a joy to discover for the first time. The kingdoms in this world draw inspiration from many popular real-world destinations such as New York City, Mexico, and Europe, with that Mario Brothers flair that's made the Mushroom Kingdom so fun to traverse for the past few decades. Enjoy dressing up Mario to best reflect his environment, and make time to mingle with the commoners as you hunt down those moons. When this game was featured at E3 2017, I was on a crazy vacation myself, watching the event from a beach resort in the southeastern portion of the United States on Tuesday, and by Friday I was playing the demo at the Nintendo World Store in New York City, and although I may never get to travel the entire world in my life, I can say that I played Nintendo's take on a world tour with this return to form title for the plumber in red. Nintendo has just wrapped up its support with the Squid to Kids sequel with its Final Fest victory going to Team Chaos. But that doesn't mean that there's not a thriving community to challenge you in this squad-based shooter. Ever since May of 2013's release of the first Splatoon game, this franchise has become a summer staple in my household, and that momentum doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon as me and my wife was just passing the controller over the weekend as we covered territory with paint and a couple rounds of turf war. Now, I haven't consecutively played these two titles for the past four years, but there's something about this time of year that just makes Splatoon feel so festive. Maybe it's something about inking skate parks, camps, amusement parks, and resort hotels that just put me in that mind frame. Maybe the weapons you use in this game remind me of paint-filled super soakers. Or it could be the marine life that inhabits Inkopolis Square. As far as Nintendo's first party lineup goes, throughout their entire legacy of consoles, Nintendo has proven they're no strangers to creating games that are clearly inspired by summer, with titles like Super Mario Sunshine, which is an entire Mario game that takes place on a tropical island, and Wii Sports Resort, which features features Wahoo Island, a resort Nintendo has featured in a handful of their first party titles. The Splatoon franchise, in my opinion, is those summer inspirations fully realized. The game has earned its own identity now, but when the first title launched, I remember Nintendo fans around the web making statements on how they felt this game reminded them of growing up in the 90s watching Nickelodeon in the summer, with its gross out humor like their trademark slime, and the rise of extreme summer sports from the early 2000s with the X Games growing in popularity. Maybe some of that has stayed with me, and it just reminds me of those simple summers I had growing up in those eras. Either way, Splatoon 2 is the ultimate summer Nintendo Switch game in our opinion, and it has earned the top spot on our list. What games have you been playing this summer? 
leave a comment down below, and if you haven't already done so, please like this video and subscribe. We would really appreciate it. And for more on Summer Games, and even more on Nintendo, stay tuned to The Weekend Mobbing.